The strongest demons require the strongest weapons to slay, my friend. Not every sword is going to make the cut. Sometimes a sword isn't the right tool for the job either. So what do you do when you find yourself up against a demonic entity that's been sealed beneath a city for years? Well, you go full-blown equestrian and hold nothing back. And that's what we're going to do today. No weapons, no tools of destruction, just some honest-to-goodness horse slapping. Can you defeat Bongo Bongo with nothing but stern swiftness to opponents behind? Let's find out. And of course, if you like my bizarre videos, consider subscribing. Most people watching aren't subscribed, so if you do enjoy my strange adventures, consider joining the free subscriber club. Today, folks, we're taking on a Shadow Legend. And speaking of Shadow Legends, today's sponsor is Raid. Raid Shadow Legends is free to play for both mobile and PC, which you can download in the description below. Gather up your strongest champions and train them to be the best team around, or sacrifice them in the local tavern to buff up your main champions to be truly unstoppable. Wow, that's actually kind of dark. But with your new slew of warriors, you can head to the arena to battle against other players in PvP. Or if you're not feeling your strongest, you can always embark on campaign mode and level them up as you progress. Raid has over 500 different champions to collect, and each one comes with its own skill tree. And alongside that, they just released a huge champion update, rebalancing over 20 different champions to make PvP battles even more competitive. The Forge just launched this month too, where you can craft all sorts of powerful artifacts. So if you're ready for battle, go to the description below to click my link to kick off your adventure with tons of rewards. Once you're in game, click on the treasure chest in the top right corner within 30 days to get 50,000 silver, 50 gems, 5 mystery shards, and lots more including a rare support champion called the Hexweaver. And as always, a huge thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video and for the continued support on my channel. There's nothing more terrifying than a swift smack of justice from the Triforce of Courage. A hand that holds no fear is a hand that should be feared. Ganondorf understood this. Why else do you think he kept his distance and flew the entire fight? But kidding aside, we have a pretty interesting task on our hand. Because unlike in our previous video where we combined the top of Ganondorf's head with many clay pots, this time we're going to encounter a lot of strange things. Because the logic that defines how Ocarina of Time operates is going to be severely tested. Bongo Bongo is our opponent, but instead of bringing the fight to him, our arena is actually going to be Lon Lon Ranch. I thought it'd be fitting, given that we're waging war against the big drummer boy on horseback. The caged off arena will make for a nice touch too, but first we need to set the stage and acquire our weapon. Now, I always hated racing Ingo. His racing minigame was supremely annoying, so we're just going to skip it entirely. We can actually just outright steal Epona if we hop over the wall with Link. On the other side of this fence is simply a loading zone which warps Link to Hyrule Field, and if we pass through this warp before acquiring Pona the normal way, the cutscene will play out as if we just escaped Lon Lon Ranch. So we've successfully stolen our weapon. But that brings us to the next part. Weapons of all kinds are banned in this fight. So how do we defeat a giant demon without any gear? Bongo Bongo's fight pattern usually requires the use of a projectile to hit his two hands. Most players use the fairy bow for this, but you could also use the hookshot if you're feeling lucky. Once both of his hands are successfully stunned, Bongo Bongo will initiate a charge attack where his eyeball will be on the ground. It isn't required, but using the lens of truth does allow you to see where he's at for Z-targeting purposes. Without it, a player can just guess and shoot him in the eye. This makes Bongo Bongo fall to the floor where we can now deal damage, but there's a couple things to note about this. For starters, Bongo Bongo's hands can be hit with things other than projectiles. It's just a lot harder. You don't need an arrow to advance him to the ground, but most players choose to do that. That's his formula though, and you can just rinse and repeat until he kills over. Okay, but we're on a horse. However, if you remember your time galloping through the land of Hyrule, you may recall that opponent can double as a weapon when she achieves a certain running speed. This is most notable if you take your first stroll at Lake Hylia and run the tech tights through the paper shredder that is opponent's legs. Only when moving at a certain velocity will damage take place, but with the power of Link's mighty smack, we can access this attack very quickly. Which brings us back to Lon Lon Ranch, as a formidable shadow takes refuge here. Strolling in at twilight, we enter the arena only to be confronted with the beat of a familiar drum. But because Bongo Bongo is loaded in as a group, both his hands, body, and drum all spawn at once. Which means we're left with this pretty odd situation where the drum's clipping through the ground and stuff. He also decided to set up camp near a fence, which is going to make things interesting. Once the battle begins, we pretty much are constantly going to be on the move. Just because we're on opponent doesn't mean we're invincible. In the world of Hyrule, there aren't honestly a lot of enemies that can actually hurt us up here. But that doesn't mean Link can't die. He can't be knocked off the horse in this fight, but that leads to some very interesting situations. I digress though. For the most part, we are calling the shots here. If we run straight for Bongo Bongo's hands, we'll find ourselves coming out on top usually. 
The opponent is constantly dealing damage as he runs, so we can stun the hands no problem. Because we are familiar with Bongo Bongo's patterns, we know that his charge attack puts his eye between his two hands. So if we make a run for it, we can knock him to the floor. Good job, Epona. I knew you could do it. Except we do run into an issue. Bongo Bongo doesn't take any damage for entering his stun phase. Damage is only tracked once he is dazed and on the ground. And because our running causes us to move through him, we find ourselves in a situation where this dang horse won't slow down and let me get a second attack in. And that's when trouble started. Making my way back around to Bongo Bongo, I found myself getting in all sorts of weird situations. His attacks would stun Link, but his grapple attacks started to mess with the game a bit. If Link is grabbed by Bongo Bongo, he is removed from Epona despite still being on Epona. So while Link's getting the five finger death clutch, we can still move around as Epona. It's really funny watching Epona jump over fences while Link is struggling. The juxtaposition is so awkward. Trying to make Epona attack the hand holding Link didn't seem to work at first, so I just smashed the A button, much like the like button on this video. Once free, I warped back over to Epona magically. Later on I did discover that you can free yourself with Epona, which is kinda neat to interrupt the action that way. But grabbing and tossing Link in general was making the game do all sorts of weird stuff. How do you toss something that has no toss state because it's bound to a horse? A lot of times Link would just be floating in the air with no horse. Or he'd be grabbed and warped across the stage, only to teleport back to where Epona was. Because of the circular fence surrounding Lon Lon Ranch's horse area, sometimes Bongo Bongo's hand would get stuck behind the fence too. So when he'd come in for a melee hit or to retreat, the hand would be forced to move along the fence, and sometimes to move the other hand insanely far away. It was a lot of fun watching all this stuff take place, but one experience totally shook me. It was one of the strangest things I have ever seen in Ocarina of Time. So apparently, on rare instances, Bongo Bongo's throw attack will actually glitch out Link. Link will be thrown into his horse riding state into the air, only to have his model tangle up and warp a few feet downwards. After this, his body becomes even further tangled, and his face textures begin to turn black as he's pushed beneath the ground. I had this happen around two times in total, and both times it was absolutely hilarious. Link looks like he was thrown into a blender, and the second time this happened, I was able to gallop on an invisible horse beneath the stage. But despite this being super funny, we still had a big problem to deal with. Bongo Bongo's hitbox doesn't extend too far backwards past his eyeball, and a horse attack causes us to move forward. So we will strike him for the stun, but slowing down to try to redirect ourselves to hit him again isn't quick enough, and he disappears before we can strike a second time. I was worried that the run was going to stop here, due to how bad movement is with Epona. But the secret to advancing was patience. So when Bongo Bongo charges you, assuming his charge isn't misaligned by the fences nearby, we actually need to bring ourselves to practically a crawl. The goal is to accelerate, break immediately, and then slap our way through the eye. Lining this up is absolutely awful. Most of the time you'll get stuck in the eyeball, and the second hit will miss entirely. Or you'll go to use your legendary slap, and Link will get off Epona because you weren't able to see that you came to a complete stop. We're trying to take down the Death Star here, so our window of opportunity is super slim, but it's doable. I'm not saying it's fun, but it is possible to get one additional hit on Bongo Bongo, which means we can actually affect his health meter. With this, the battle sways in our favor. But we have to do the grueling setup over and over again for quite a while, to even get the boss into kill range. It doesn't help that Bongo Bongo has the highest HP out of any boss either. So we ride on and endure. Eventually, and by that I mean several hours later, we've reached the moment of truth. Bongo Bongo begins his final charge towards Link, but like any patient samurai, Link draws his weapon at the last moment and strikes the rear of his horse, only to sheath it immediately. With his prey crushing down on him, Link draws upon the power of his sweet hand tattoo and tans Epona's hide with his seasoned clapper. And Bongo Bongo beats his last drum. The fight is over. Because the slap sends Epona into motion, Link rides off to the edge of the fence because we aren't able to stop him or influence his movement during a cutscene. Bongo Bongo has been slain and his body burns up in the middle of Lon Lon Ranch. The only thing left behind is his glitchy drum and peace restores to this area. This is probably the dumbest challenge I've ever done. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm glad it was possible. If you enjoyed this insane trip, be sure to subscribe now so you can watch me do some more weird things in the future. And with that, thanks for tuning into this horse slapping adventure. And until my next video, cheers.